Okay, I'm gonna record this one. Hi, I'm gonna apologize in advance. The neighbors are renovating and they only like to do it like right when nap time starts until around when nap time is over. So unfortunately, that is my only minuscule window. So I'm sorry. I don't like it either, but here we are. Okay, so hi, I missed you. I've been gone for a minute because um, life is hard, but here's the thing. I just read a book like recently called If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio and I am in love with it. I loved this book so much and I have to gush about it and I have to tell you about it because I really, really want more people to read it and love it with me. So yes, first, you know, all about this. Thank you. It's very helpful. Let's go. So I thought that this was a new book because out of nowhere, it was suddenly being aggressively advertised to me and targeted advertising can be a little bit creepy, but I kind of like it because mostly I just talk about and research books. So most of my ads are books and I mean, it could be worse, right? So this one was suddenly popping up everywhere. And then on my Kindle, it was $2.99. And I said, whatever, put it in my library. I'll get to it maybe one day. And if not, it was three bucks. So I finished a book. I didn't know what to read next. And I hadn't even read the synopsis for this one. So I was looking for it, but I just started reading the first few pages. And then I kept reading. And then all of a sudden I was halfway through the book and I said, well, I guess I'm reading this now. It was so good. I could not put it down. So what's this book about? If We Were Villains is dark academia. So if that is in your wheelhouse, you can stop now and go pick it up because it, oh, it was so good. If you like dark academia, say no more. And the only dark academia book that I've read before this is The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which I did not love and I was really disappointed about. So I wasn't even sure if this genre was gonna be for me. This is what I wanted that book to be. Like this is exactly what I thought I was picking up when I picked up The Secret History. So it has revived, restored, rejuvenated my love or at least interest in picking up any dark academia novels. So we follow our main character, Oliver, as he goes to theater school. It's a small elite arts college where they only study Shakespeare. Our class is made up of seven students all together because every year kids drop out or they're not re-accepted, so it's very competitive. Not everybody's gonna make it to the end. But by the time you get to fourth year, you are a very small, tight-knit group. Except, sorry, I need to back up a second. Actually, we open the book to Oliver just finishing a 10 year prison sentence for a murder he may or may not have committed. He's talking to a police officer who was the chief, he arrested him, and he's never liked the story that he was given. He's about to retire, so he just wants the real story from Oliver. And Oliver agrees, once he's out, to give it to him. So they go to the school and we jump back and forth in time to the present day, Oliver telling the story and the kids in the past in the story. Something that's very interesting about the way this book is written is, like I said, it's a Shakespeare focused arts college. The book is written in parts and acts. So it follows kind of the structure of a play, which was a really just nice touch. Anyways, the class, the school, the murder. Someone in this class dies. 
No spoilies. The story continues following the group, which is made up of friends and lovers and actual cousins. They're like a family, a messed up family, which is a family. We watch this group as it contracts, but then starts to unravel. There's so much pressure and tension. It's definitely a thriller, but not like a jump scare. It's got this slow, ramped up atmosphere to it that is oh, just so my thing. Another way that's really interesting that this book follows the Shakespeare play structure is that each of our characters fall into a specific character archetype. We have the hero, the sidekick, the villain, the tyrant, the temptress, the ingenue, ingenue, ingenue. I should have looked that up before I started recording this. Sorry guys. And the extra. The characters follow this typecasting on and off the stage. We follow them as they do performances. Another thing I loved is that this entire cast is really morally gray, which is a type of character that I really like. We're not really sure who would have done it because nobody is squeaky clean. Everybody maybe could have done it. Like you have reason to question everyone's motives and actions. Every year at the school, they follow a different kind of play. So like third year is comedy and fourth year, their last year, is tragedy. So you can keep that in mind. Just saying. The only thing I could see about this book that could potentially make it not fun for people to read is that there's a lot of the Shakespeare, Shakespearean, Old Englishy language. The students are <laughs> quite pretentious and they actually talk to each other quite often in this type of speech. I'll give you an example. So yes, in the actual plays, of course, they're quoting Shakespeare because they're doing Shakespeare plays. But also, I should be able to pretty much flip to any page. There's a lot of it. He twitched at the weight of my hands on his shoulders. Since no man knows aught of what he leaves, what is't to leave betimes, I said. He looked at me with unbearable mistrust. So, just randomly, when they speak to each other, James, please, let be. You know, that's all woven into the story. I personally loved that about the story, but I can see it being tiresome if you don't. And at the end of this book, it was probably the very first time in my entire life I wanted to actually pick up some Shakespeare and read it, like for enjoyment's sake. The Shakespearean language in the book does make it feel more complicated and like you're so smart and at least I felt so smart. But the rest of the book, it's not trying to trick you in any way, really. It's, I really liked the writing. I loved her writing style and I thought it flowed together really nicely. You kept moving, the pacing was good. There's also a love story. Well, there's a few love stories, but there's one at the core that will take your heart gingerly in its hands press it and then it'll start to squeeze and keep squeezing until your heart is a miserable shriveled little prune <sighs> and then at the end just a little just a little kiss on your poor broken smashed heart it sounds not great <sighs> just read it read it I had feelings and they were strong and I'm not over it and I'll never be over it. So talk to me about it because <sighs> I'm still suffering. This book was so satisfying to read. It scooped me up and it just held on for the entire time. It's been a while since, I mean, I love reading, but occasionally, especially with the kids and everything going on, it can sometimes feel like a chore or like an extra thing. This, oh, it was such a joy to pick it up 
and I was genuinely sad when it was over. So yeah, this has become one of my favorite books. I don't really even know how to explain it. It's got, yeah, so much atmosphere, and it was just such an interesting and enthralling read. I really don't feel like it's gotten the love it deserves. This book was published in 2017, and I'm only even hearing of it or picking it up now. I really thought it was excellent. Uh, but what do you think? Are you going to pick it up? Have you read it? Did you love it? Did you not love it? Let me know in the comments. Keep it kind, please. Thank you. <laughs> but I would really, really love to hear from you guys. That's going to be it from me today. Thank you guys so much for watching, subscribing, and leaving a like on the video. It means so much to me. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye! I'm uh, still super pregnant, in case you were wondering. <laughs>